as mentioned, we, um, Des and I are based um, at SA Shiver Research Institute in Mount Edgecombe, north of Durban. And for a number of years now, we've been funded by working for water to mass rear weed bar control agents. Um, these are tested by ALC, and then once they get release and warrant mass rear, um, we've been doing it now um, for a number of, a number of years. Um, um, the, I normally do a year-by-year -year update, but this year we decided to do uh, the last three years what we've done, how many we've released and where. Um, and we, last year we underwent quite a large uh, facility upgrade. Um, and we also experienced our various problems with, with labour, like just um, everybody else does, with um, poor quality plants um, and other invasive insects in our cultures. So, um, what we've done, I'm just going to look at what we've done this year so far. Um, we've put up new, some new portable greenhouses, um, and these have been really beneficial. They're far bigger than the ones we had previously, and our staff have done it all on their own. They've been rented them. Um, and last year, I said that we've been given this area by accessory management to erect ponds, and that was earmarked, and that's now been also been done. Um, we've had a fence, just for safety reasons, because they're children living on the property. And we've actually managed just to fit in 30 ponds there. So at present, we, we fall to capacity with ponds, and we're running 86 of these at the moment. And we also been able to get our own nursery table. We found some frames that were lying around, so we put our own cuttings. We've got nothing in one there for um, a rust, so that's been, and it's probably very autumn, well, automatic irrigation. Um, then the number of, we, we've, over the last three years, um, We've produced a total of 550,000 plus agents, of which 84% are for aquatic weeds. This is our biggest demand, especially for water hyacinth and probably at the detriment to some of our, of our terrestrial ones. Um, firstly, in the Akatana, just looking at where we've released, um, of course, because we're based in KZ and I suppose we are, but fast, it's easy to get the insects out and we've got to get them. The structure, we've got a lot of good cooperators in KZ, but we've covered quite a few areas in the Popo, Rompospray, even um, um, Kauteng, Free State, Eastern Cape, we've done the leases there recently, and it's going very well in the Cape, especially on the Deep River. We've got some very good cooperators there, and Martin took some of our agents to, uh, to the Congo for Lake Nango. Um, I'll also look at various problems we've experienced in our different cultures. The critotosis is not one of the insects that we contracted to rear, but we get them occurring in our ponds. And in 2012, we sent us to up 40,000. So if they're there, we collect them up and send them out. Um, we've done Lachaba is at Makatsi Sprite in Kruger Park, Bronco Sprite, also quite a lot locally, especially on the Gany River complex, and um, down in Cape Town as well. Um, recently, in no well, November, we acquired the Cornox culture and some went off for release in January and uh, we've actually got a lot of stock of poppers at the moment, so those will be going on shortly. And that culture is doing very really well. We have some other cultures, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have, we've had some dismal failures which I will highlight just now, so but this one is doing particularly well. It's quite happy with the conditions we provide and others are less appreciative. Um, Problems you have, because we're running a large number of water hyacinth ponds and the agents are so destructive, we have to continuously keep replacing, the, you know, um, replenishing the plants with the new material. And we've got a couple of sites around Durban, we've even been as far as Wilburg in the Midlands to collect, and one of our very good collecting sites at Isapingo near the old airport site has just now this last few months been handed by the water hyacinth mark. Now for Greta, which is gratifying to see, but now we had to go and look elsewhere, and it's very, very destructive. And uh, for the first time, lots of us have been able to see what the moths look like. We have the drumless, the farmers, and this has been our biggest output. We've released 195,000 in the last three years. Um, the Popo and Pomolanga, the Latin KZN, Eastern Cape, and also. Um, down at the Western Cape, and uh, we've covered a number of rivers there, and quite recently now we've been in the Plain River area near Stanford, and they really work very well. I'll also highlight some of the 
recent successes, but it just makes it far more interesting. And um, we start to yeah, do the case and area quite a lot as well. And we're getting lots of new requests for these concepts. One of our recent successes has been down the South Coast. Many will know the Sandomir Holiday Resort. It's 161 kilometers south of Durban. And it was 100% covered. This is what it It's approximately 7,000 square meters. It was 100% covered. And um, we released over a nine week period. And from June to August, and we put in 10,000 weevils. That's what it looked like in April before releases commenced. And we had a lot of problems with, from the Santa Maria complex, from the golf course. They wanted all kinds of care. We wanted to spray. They said, no, no, trial by control. They wanted guarantees and compensation of things went wrong. Anyway, eventually convinced them. And by September, this is what the plants were looking like. Um, October, and by December, we got a letter of thanks for, from the golf course to say it was back to its original pristine condition. So, and then recently now, we some germination of seedlings, but we're going to just go back. And, and things like this just open people's eyes, and Martin also helped by writing a letter for us to say these things were not dead, these insects were not, uh, would not harm any other plants, the golf course turf. And, so that was a huge success, and I think we've won them over. And um, Search Vegas, uh, Fault has done quite well, we've released 75,000 in the last uh, three years. A number of areas as well. And I'll spread it off. The Pope, Pope, London, part 10. Um, I'll start a new site in his area that we're sending next week. Um, some have been such poor peers, they've got a patient and, and sprayed it. But we've seen some good clearing in, in a lot of these areas. And this is just another small example. This is in Hillcrest, which is 29 kilometers west of Durban. Um, this, uh, not a very not really like This is a new Hillcrest hospital on your left, and there's an eco estate. And I got a call from the lady who does the clearing, and she does the gardening and maintenance, and she clears up the aliens. And she requested aliens that were collected at Sassy. And we, gave, we released over a three month period. And it was just a small release. It was about 150 and then 250. And she phoned me two weeks ago and said, Was there a month ago? And somebody is getting worse. Can you come and have a look? So off I went. Unfortunately, I, I should have got a photograph, but um, it, was, it was almost like 99.9% clear. And the plants that were around the edges, 90% of them were floating below the water level. And that's what I, I just collected a handful of what I could find, took them home, and that evening there were seven certificates running around on those plants. And when I collected them, you couldn't even see them. They're hiding away in the roots and under the leaves. So I think they, those plants are absolutely in history. So it just, and it literally, we released over three months, and it took about 14 months to clear. And then it was quite a small release. So, that was hot nice. We had a huge problem with our um, Search Vegas culture. It got going a bit late this year, because we only released during summer. And we had this water lily leaf cutter in our ponds. And it just always been there for a number of years. And just suddenly last year, it started getting worse. And Martin Hill kindly identified it for us. And it actually cuts pieces of the um, Salvinia leaves and makes this little coup. And your plants start looking like that. And we have three really large ponds where we keep all our stock plants to feed our ponds, and that's what eventually happens. We just get everything simply. Um, we tried hand removal, and then Angela Bounce suggested a BT spray, and we sprayed a couple of times to collect new field material, and it's all disappeared off some interest. But things like this can set you right back. Then Rico, which again we'll speak about later, on Paresia, which is quite a bad personal weed, it's a cactus. Um, this is not the best agent, but it has some kind of suppressing effect. Um, we've released 18,500. Uh, of course, mostly in the Paisen area because it is a huge problem there. And we've had quite a lot of establishment. And people are saying it's having an effect. Richard Bay Minerals, the ecologist, said it's definitely helping in their area. Um, in Yellow Park, there's the Stanback Nature Reserve, they seem an effect. Um, and 
in the German Hall area on the bluff. We've released now close to 5,000 of these people, so it's a huge um, area of risk giving. But Gaila's got some nice new agents in quarantine, which I think will not spot this one. And then Pan Kamaza is the Promolina agent. When I started six years ago, this is what uh, we read exclusively on Promolina, did huge releases. And then this was, it was terminated in 2011, and this was the last of our um, releases. And it seems to prefer uh, young seedlings in the shade, and that's its niche. And it's still in the field today, and I'm sure it's getting something. Um, Lantana agents have not been briefed. Um, we haven't had that much success with them, especially Aiken in the last year, it's been quite dismal. Um, but we've done some releases. Um, we need to do an assessment of those units, which we're going to persevere a batch on. We've been given some, um, this white plantain and all, which is a bit of this plant, and we're just bulking up on those plants. Um, it's, a, it's a PTL baller, on, um, and it has been shown to have an effect on, quite a severe effect on the plant. We're, we've got a number of things. Uh, Longy tosses, this is the flea beetle that feeds on the roots of. Um, Longy tosses uh, of, of um, lantana. Um, it feeds on the leaves and then lay the eggs at the base of the plant and they feed on the rootlets. Um, and we've had some establishment of those, especially in the eastern area. We've definitely found it there. Um, we've also um, in demand for supplying various agents for research projects, uh, especially near Katana on Waterhouse. And Charles Fitz is one that they better put on the power people. Uh, 26,000 in the last three years. So that's also, you know, at least able to provide, it may just be a, a few, like 40 endonomes or people who so need to write up their master's projects and just need a few incidents. So we supply those as well. Um, all our, um, we, we're running a team of 10 people at the moment who started just with one. We've now got 10, we've, only, we've got two vacant posts, so we've got eight people at the moment. But I did an exercise because I mean it is a capacity building program, and to look at where the staff we had through the system are today, because that's always quite interesting and it's of importance to working for water. Oh, and sorry, I missed that point. And we also have to be the popping in must to solve that in our program for the probably for the new contract. Okay. Um, Six of our staff members. Now, we, when we employ them, we insist on a metric, a biology, a bonus if they've got a driver's license, because we also have to go out to the field. And six of our staff have moved into permanent post in the secondary unit, which does, um, they rear the uh, sugar cane uh, moth, and also do biological control on that. So it's a permanent post, and it's an opportunity for six. Six staff out of 22 that I've looked at, in the six years that I've been there, have moved into the insect unit. One has gone into the entomology insecticide program, and then um, he moved to an FET college as a lecturer. <coughs> and then one, and then he, he, when he left, one of the other staff moved into his post, so it created an opportunity for one of them. Um, one we mentioned we have set technical teams at Sash Street where we do, you can book them, they do field surveys or field work. One moved into there, and he then went to ALC, worked there for a while, University of Sydney Land, and he's now a pain supply officer at Elova, Elova Sugar Town, South Coast in Pennsylvania. And one moved to Sash Street, he's a, a nematology technician, and um, one moved to the model where they do sampling for their trials, they analyze <coughs> their trial results, and he's now working for a PhD Billiton as a laboratory te technician in Pumalaga, and it's a coal mine. Um, and then one of our ladies went to a plant breeding program on one of our satellite farms, and one went to the Department of Home Affairs and Border Control, and then one of that particular lady was also the email. They are crazy borders, monitoring borders, and and it's not because they've had experience with uh, weed bar control. And then we have one who went to Rhodes University, <laughs> she's sitting right in the front, and she's now um, with working for water as a, as a, as a, as a bar control officer. Um, two have gone to citrus research and doing very well there. One, she came with a biotech degree and HTE 
and she's now teaching at a local primary school. She's teaching life sciences there. And one, this guy she left for health reasons. He was an epileptic and just stressed with dirt and heat. And his incidents were getting worse and worse. So he left the show and is starting his own logistics business with his brother. Um, one, we had one who actually had a master's degree. Um, he left to go and do his PhD at UKZN and then his supervisor left. And he is now air con control, quality control consultant for an air conditioning company. Um, one relocated. Um, she's now employed now. She went up to Congola. She actually did I have no misfortune, but unfortunately there's no back weed up there. And this guy, we know he's employed in Pumanaga, which is a very company you wear. And then one, we don't know, we've lost track. So I think that of those 22 that went through the system, they've all done well. All our staff have, except for two new recruits we employed last year, have been through the roads. Um, uh, we buy control course with Martin and we also get um, capacity working for the capacity building students from UKZN and Maritzburg twice a year so they can gain some experience. And we have one unfortunate who was deceased in the old driveway. So thank you for working for us for your funding and also for Sashu for coming up with us. And thanks very much. And they do have other things. Well, what you ask is, is still demand for their bike control agents say that you're currently rearing. Um, I sent around a questionnaire and um, asked people are there any new bike control agents that we should consider a to rear in, in the future? And then uh, are there any new weeds we should uh, consider and, and, and uh, bike control agents on those? And uh, uh, it's, it's a bit the normal thing, you send out a lot of questionnaires and you get a few back. So it's well, it's just exactly the same as as other people just when it comes to putting in forms. Um, but yeah, we got uh, five replies from the ARC um, to, to when we just, uh, well, this is for the whole question here. And, and the first question is, uh, should we continue with what we're wearing? And uh, uh, the, the, the ADMV species in the left column, the bio control agents we're wearing are in the, the, the next column. And, and then just uh, what the people say, why, for yes, and for no, and if there's no, nothing there, there was no comment about it. And some people um, just didn't want to comment with it, so that's where a question mark is. And, you know, looking at that, it's, it's um, uh, lobby tasks, as so respect to the guys here, and then you know, now they are the ones that are working on it, so they want to say there's also another year, another why, uh, for yes, uh, over there. Um, the response I got from Wiki for Water, they had uh, two no's there uh, uh, for that, but um, they, that again would be uh, open to debate. Let's, let's see what people think. But uh, uh, looking at that, especially the water weeds, is a, a, a big demand for us to keep on with, with those, and, and also uh, for most of the, um, the, the terrestrial weed bar control agents. Enrique, um, uh, after Jens giving his talk, you know, that. We, we might have to uh, lower the operation of that in favour of, of the new new agents um, when they become available. Um, again, the two left hand um, columns are the, again, the same weeds that we, we, we're looking at now, uh, but those are the new um, the insects that, that hopefully will be released in, in September or will get released permits. Um, the the rest here is uh, that period of our years, which um, we saw a little bit about earlier this month, this, this week, and uh, you'll see it uh, later. I've got a little moth called Dicroraptor, uh, and then for Carp Carpinium uh, uh, Stromotus, and, and Smicrinix. But Smicrinix is going to come up at the end of uh, 2014, but that still gives us time to, uh, to plan uh, really <coughs> and so on. Um, and then on uh, Accordia, a little Delphacid uh, Megamelis is also uh, a, a new agent that we can, can look at. So that, that's what, what people are asking for. Yeah. And then we've lost the last, oh no, sorry. The, the last slide I've combined on the other, on the other side of the table. So, um, we also asked, are there new weeds we need to target? Um, and, and, um, We've got cat uh, claw creeper, um, the, the, uh, there's the one, and the hypercosmia, there's a bar control agent that you can rear on it, and also tamarix, and, and there's two bar control agents on that. So um, 
yeah, you know, if you've got to do all of that, we, we probably haven't got the space um, at, at the moment. Uh, so we, we, we actually have to be quite um, or clever or, and, and also uh, rely on, on the experts, um, you guys are experts. Um, opinion on, on you know which, which are the best studios, which ones will give us the best bucks for our money. So yeah, I think if there are any questions uh, or discussion, uh, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now allow um, some questions that can both be directed to Des or Dennis. Okay. Uh, I just want to understand, uh, looking at the let's say the release sites that we have uh, throughout the country. So what I want to understand is uh, the TMC production or the um, amount of agent that you are mastering. If you are uh, mastering enough agents or you are under mastering, looking at the costs of the regions, uh, we may be under the first team or you are mastering agents that maybe at the end of the year you find maybe, for example, you expected maybe the request from the regions to be 10 and then you only maybe get requests maybe two and then at the end maybe you find that you are mastering a lot of agents but there's not enough requests from us to release in the site. Yeah, um, we, 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 um, we've got such a backlog of, of orders we still have to put in so we are getting great requests uh, there's some regions that aren't asking as much as other regions, but that we, we really uh, we, we, we're not uh, we're not producing insects and uh, not knowing where they go to. We, we've uh, yeah, we, we've got to actually. Uh, Denise has got a whole roster of people that, that she supplies, um, and any new people that ask for for insects get put in that roster and they get supplied on on a like rotation basis. But yeah, we, we've got uh, huge demand for, for the insects. Okay, maybe this generally let me finish, finish up my question. It's a question maybe which it will be like I'm asking myself since I'm also from the organization. Which in terms of the feedback to Sasri, in terms of the impact that the agents are making on these sites. I know there are different successes in different areas, but I just wanted to understand if there is a proper way of uh, getting feedback to you or you struggle maybe to get feedback. I just wanted to understand if that gap is properly closed or there's still some improvement that need to be done. Yeah, I think we get great feedback. Uh, you know, when we uh, give insects to a new person or for a new site, we normally ask for a GPS point and also a fixed point photograph. Uh, the fixed point photograph confirms, uh, allows us to confirm that we that we, we target in this actual one uh, that the insects are, are good on. Because quite often we actually had the wrong kind of uh, insect asked because the people couldn't identify the weed properly. So we, we need to check that. Um, and, and then we've got some people that, that send regular photographs back, fixed point photographs, that, 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 that could be improved with some of the other sites. But yeah, we, we get uh, quite nice feedback. You know, Jess, I'm interested in the antinomus that you said it's well established now in a lot of areas, and yet you still have it as two yeses for continuing mass rearing, which is difficult in the facility. Would it be better to now just move into the field and recollect there for redistribution? Um, it, 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 we could do that in, in Southern Natal, uh, but I don't know if you remember Denise's map of, of the distribution where we have released. There's big gaps in Northern Natal from a longer so and we'd like to get more sites established even in, in the buckwheat areas, so that you don't have to travel so far to, to relocate that in a sense. So uh, I, I think, we, yeah, I'd like to see a little bit a, a better spread of established insects before we start doing relocation. So while we 
data collection, uh, John's question was also very really pertinent in a lot of our, our water hyacinth sites that we're actually releasing now, or that we've released in, our populations of, of, of the, 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 bag, the, the, the weevils, the neopatina, are, 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 are as high as in our ponds. So people can actually go to those locations now and, and collect their own pested plants and bring it to take to other pested areas. And we've got probably four or five uh, sites like that uh, where, where relocation can now attack attack by uh, place instead of uh, augmentation of, of, of the, the beetles. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Uh, mine is just to try and understand uh, in terms of releasing the biocontrol agents. Are these uh, the silver bullets? Do they really take it one species and one species only? Because I think the goal is not in as much as we would like to uh, deal with invasive alien plants. On the other hand, we would like to conserve other important species. Are there any experiences where you have come across uh, certain agents not only targeting a specific species that is meant for, but rather uh, focusing on any other species that are important? Uh, because I think that is very much important for us uh, in terms of dealing with the problem of invasive alien plants. Yes. Yeah. Um, we, when we get the, the, the insects, they've already gone through a whole screening process against other plants. Um, so, and, and that's what the ARC uh, do, the, the experts in, in the weed biocontrol section of the ARC do all these high specificity tests for every agent. And then um, only if they're shown to be uh, very specific to the target alien weed, they, then the, the report, uh, report gets written up uh, by, by the experts. That gets peer reviewed. And, and then uh, by, by um, other ex external experts. Um, if they're happy with it, uh, then uh, it goes to the, the provinces to comment on. And if they're happy with it, then public opinion is asked for. And if they're happy with it, then only the release permit is, is, is released. I think that's the process. Um, before, or or um, March can correct me if, if I'm wrong. But you know, when, when we get the, the insect, all that uh, has specificity testing is done, and, and we are 99.9% sure that it won't attack anything else. Thank you very much for the talk. And my question is basically on the new species that you are actually targeting to do mastery on. And I was just looking at the tamarics and particularly you've chosen to sort of like to uh, mastery on tamarics from a system. And um, the two um, we, uh, the two beetles that you have chosen, is it like they've already gone into um, screening for the host specificity test, or it's just uh, projects that are like undergoing, and then as soon as uh, all the work has been done, then you'll start where you will start very Yeah, but if you speak to Marcus, uh, can Marcus give us an answer? He's right next to you. Uh, he was the one that asked for it. Yeah. It's a um, prospective project at the moment. So, Galore has done the molecular work and he'll speak later in the week about that to say that the, the target species, Tamaris Cronicisma, is basically sitting nature <coughs> away from our own Tamaris. Um, that was the main question there. And we are looking at the Americans who have used those two species of beetles in the United States. That's my proposal is that we consider them. But obviously, they'd have to go through that screening system before we would consider it. And to, to reiterate what you said about the previous question, we've never made a mistake in this country yet. We have not had a serious non target effect. And biocontrol, I think, should be very proud of that. Thank you.